Hey, it's Paul Browning from HowToNetwork.net. While you're watching this video, if you could open up another browser window and pop over to HowToNetwork.net and I'll show you how to print out this lab. So when you get to the URL, if you click on the 101 CCNA labs, scroll down. If you haven't been here before, just please read through a few couple of paragraphs to help you get the most out of this service. There's no charge at all for 101 CCNA labs. So if you click on the book icon, the lab I'd like to cover today, very important for the CCNA exam and also the CCENT, we've got a lot of SDM labs, Security Device Manager. You need to know how to do quite a lot with this. And the lab I'd like to look at is configuring network address translation, which is lab 90. So if you click on that, uh, it's got all of the diagrams and the requirements for you. And all you need to do is click on the printer friendly format and you can print it out and then we can follow the lab along in the next section. Hello and welcome to Lab 90, using Cisco SDM to configure network address translation. OK, on R2 we're just going to do some basic tests just to make sure what we can and can't do. We can ping the 172.16.1.1 network because it's corrected directly connect to our interface and we have a root. But from R2 when we try and ping to the 10 1 1 254 address we all get a failure. This is because we would actually have a root through to that network and we're going to resolve that by using NAT. And we're going to configure this on the actual SDM not doing it through the CLI as we've previously shown. Okay, so let's get SDM launched up now. Let's just double check first with the Telnet. Telnet will be the same, but we're going to test with Telnet after the SDM NAT configuration. So let's get NAT SDM fired up. Go to configure. I'm going to choose the NAT option on the left submenu. Okay, we're not going to go for basic NAT, we're actually going to go for advanced NAT because we're just going to translate port 23 for Telnet. OK, click Advance Nat and launch the selected task. OK, it's all very self-explanatory. So we're just going to click Next to the first instruction. We want to choose the interface that connects to the Internet or the ISP. So this is going to be our external interface. So we're going to choose our 000 interface. We're going to enter the IP address that we want to use. For the NAT, this is going to be the address that we're going to try connecting to. Okay, so that's going to be NATed to the 10.11.254 address. Let's go ahead and click Next now. Okay, now what it's going to ask us to do is where we actually want to apply this through and specify the networks that are allowed to come through and use these. It is good, it, it does prompt you if you do something wrong. So if we click Next now, it's going to say we need to at least choose one. If we do choose the wrong range, it will tell us that we've chosen the wrong range. So let's go ahead and select something incorrectly. Okay, so we're going to choose 172. This is going to be incorrect. We can't use that. So we're going to actually use the 10 network. This is the correct one. Okay. Now we're going to add the actual NAT, the private address that we want to NAT. This is the device that we're coming for. We actually want to connect to on the private side. 10.11.254. You remember we weren't able to tell that to the device. We're going to assign that the 172.16.1.254 address. Okay. Now we actually are going to do this for TCP port 23 only for Telnet. We want to take port 23 and translate that to B port 23. And it is TCP based, remember? Telnet is TCP. OK, click OK there. Now click Next. OK, we can see what it's going to apply the translation 10.11.254, port 
254 port 23. Click finish and apply the configuration. Click OK and let's go ahead and test this now on the router. Okay, let's just try a quick tailnet. 172.16.1.254. We can see a connection, so that's all working. Okay, that's the end of the lab. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.